G'day, Stupid Webby Futures here, and today, woo! Need I say more? It's the uh, Epiquad 210 X Frame, and I am super stoked to finally get this thing. Uh, when I opened up my mailbox and saw that this was there, I was wrapped. Now, uh, some of you might remember I did a review of the 180 EpiX, uh, which is this bad boy up here, and uh, it has a big place in my heart. So, uh, to finally get my hands on one of these for review, super stoked. Uh, can't wait to throw it on the bench, and uh, let's get started. All right, let's go. Now, here's how it's going to come when you get it out of your lovely post box. And one little thing, when you get these things, I absolutely love these boxes. So, uh, they're stuck with this sort of industrial design. I think they look really cool. So, I uh, got a bit of nice style there. So, whoever chose these box designs, uh, well done. So, inside, uh, this is how it's going to come, packed in this sort of bubble foam. Now, it's pretty simple, just some cardboard and foam. So, let's check out what we got. Now here's everything you get in the box when you get the frame. So we've got our base plate just here, our top plate, a HD camera mount. Uh, here we've got some FPV camera mounts and things like that. Uh, and then we've got our standoffs and uh, nuts and bolts and screws and things like that. And also some vibration dampeners, as well as some zip ties. Now uh, I don't know where they came from, but they were in the box. So that was fantastic. Didn't know they came with them. And uh, of course you get this little trendy sticker there. So uh, I've already got one of these. So leave a comment if you want me to post you a sticker. I'm sure we can figure something out if you want an Epicord sticker. And and something I'm super excited about, you also get, uh, and we're going to talk about all these in detail, but you also get the option of buying some of these things. Now, what I have here is the Epirex, which is an awesome little uh, receiver right here that uh, we're going to talk about a lot in detail, and as well as a special Epi PDB, which I can't wait to put on these things to make pretty much the sleekest build you are ever going to see. But right now I want to focus on these parts, the actual frame and the hardware itself, before we talk about these electrical components and things like that. So let's get started. Let's uh, check out this base plate. So here it is, here's uh, probably the most important part and this is the base plate and right off the bat you can tell that they have used some extremely good carbon. Now uh, I know it seems a bit ridiculous and you might be saying, Stu, uh, how can you tell that this is such good carbon? Well, uh, just by the feel I think a little bit of this, it feels uh, really clean cut and there's no sharp edges on it at all and uh, it looks extremely, extremely strong. So uh, I've seen a few frames in my time and uh, this is definitely probably the best carbon that I've seen to date, but we'll have to see how it holds up in crashes to test its strength and things like that. <laughs> now you can see here it is called a 210 because it is 210 millimeters from motor to motor and that's pretty standard nowadays for five inch frames. Uh, it is made to run a five inch prop and the motors you're going to run on these things you can run anything from 1306, 18, uh, your 1800s and also your 22s on here. So uh, it takes a wide variety of motors which is fantastic. You can see it's in the X configuration and that usually allows for a little bit more maneuverability and uh, agility when it's in the air compared to its H brothers. Now the big question that everybody is asking and they want to know the answer to is how thick is this frame? So uh, this is a 4mm thick carbon, uh, just there, well, it's coming in at 4.2 actually. Uh, so 4mm thick carbon which means it's going to be extremely hard to break so it should be extremely durable. And that's especially important too when you have these X configurations because their arms are usually a little bit uh, weaker than their H counterparts. But uh, I haven't broken an arm in a long time, maybe I'm not flying hard enough, but uh, I definitely think this, this 4mm carbon is is going to hold up very well. You're going to break a lot more things before you break some of these arms. Now something I really like about this frame is just how short it is across the uh, entire length of the body just here. So we're getting 135 millimeters just there. And uh, that's going to be fantastic because uh, I plan to build something pretty special with this frame. Uh, it's a bit of a secret right now, but I have some big things in the work for this thing. So we're going to be uh, pretty much punching holes in the sky with it. Now all the little cutouts and things like that, we've got our two slits here and there. I think that's pretty cool design because they're actually, you could put a battery on the bottom if you wanted. So you could run a bit of bat, a bit of Velcro through here if you did want to mount a battery on the bottom. You got your standard 36 by 36 sort of uh, nays or flight controller PDB sort of mounting holes, which are pretty standard across the quads now. Uh, you've got these six little holes, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and that's made for your standoffs. And then the only other little parts we have, we have some little cutouts here for your FPV mounts. They're, they're little bits that are going to hold in your FPV camera, they'll slide in just here. And also just at the back here, the last these last two little holes, they are made perfectly for an XT60 connector to sit just on here and you zip tie that down directly to the frame. And I really find that works really well so you don't have the cord hanging out, it's not going to get caught in the motors or anything like that. So uh, I think that's a fantastic uh, little addition that Epicords is running on their frames. 
Now one thing I really like about the EpiQuads is they don't have any unnecessary cutouts or patterns or anything like that through the frame and I can just tell here that they understand that there is no point taking out carbon in here to save a little bit of weight when you can uh, and as well as making the frame more expensive because of the machining if it's going to reduce the strength of it. The amount of weight that you would save by having a cutout in here is not worth the strength that you'd have to give up and it's great that these guys understand that so they have an extremely strong uh, and robust bottom plate. All right, so now that's the bottom plate. Let's talk about the top plate. Now I've got the top plate just here and it is the same length from uh, the front to the back. It's still 135 millimeters. And a few things have actually changed uh, in terms of this top plate compared to the old version that I have on my Epi 180 here. You can actually see the size difference just like that. Uh, I think the guys discovered that there just was not enough room on these Epis really to be mounting uh, a good size battery and also a GoPro and things like that. So it's a little bit longer uh, on this 210 which is fantastic and they've also increased the size of the cutout just here because uh, they've started to realize that people are going really really fast so this cutout goes right back and allows for an insane angle uh, when you're flying so it should be uh, really able to go very very fast uh, again just in here we've got our there our little FPV slots just here for our FPV holder and our one two three four five six parts there that's for our uh, standoffs You've got these little slits just here, one, two, three, and four, and they're great if you want to zip tie some things down, uh, like if you are using your receivers or your VTX and things like that, it's always handy to have those things in there. And you'll also notice something I really like, uh, keeping with their sort of simple and clean designs and sort of maximizing the strength, is there's no little cutouts or silly patterns or anything like that. It's pretty much made so it'll perform really, really well and hold up well in crashes. Now one of the things I really like to see here when I'm looking at this top plate is you've got these two little holes here. I actually made a comment when I first reviewed the 180 in its top plate that uh, I didn't have anywhere to run my receiver antennas out and I felt like they were getting a bit cut up running through these slits and things like that. So uh, it's great to see that that's what these holes have been put in the back for and they allow you to zip tie up uh, I guess your receiver antennas and of course we've got our standard sort of pigtail antenna here to stop anything getting snapped off uh, from your VTX. Now it is a two millimeter top plate and uh, I think that's plenty, especially considering there's no silly patterns or anything through here, just the uh, essentials for what you need to get the job done. So it should be very tough. All right, now this little bit, this is the HD sort of camera plate just here that you mount your GoPro or Mobius or something on like that. And that's coming in at 1.5 millimeters thick. Uh, pretty simple design, something I really like. It's got two slits here for a bit of Velcro. It screws into sort of these rubberized sort of little uh, screws just here, which are fantastic uh, because they mean they're not going to pop out all the time. You're not going to have to put them back in. And also there's got a nice little thing with a little cutouts just here. You can zip tie it down, which I'll show you later when we've built the whole frame. And then finally, the last bit of carbon that we're going to talk about just here, this is sort of the FPV mounts that go in and they hold your FPV camera. Now, pretty ingenious design, something I really like. They have this little piece of uh, sort of printed plastic just here which screws onto the back of your HS117 camera. And what that's going to allow you to do is when it's inside here, you're going to allow you to swivel it up and down uh, sort of in the field without needing to muck around too much to change your angle. This was something actually commented on uh, and I wish they improved in the 180 when I first got my hands on it and it's great to see that it's come through. Uh, a special design for the HS117 uh, camera. And what's going to happen, these are going to just pop in the side just like this. You have to make sure you get them around the right way because one side is taller than the other to account for the carbon uh, and how thick it is. And pretty much your camera is going to sit in here. And it's very standard nowadays anyway to have some special mounts, especially for the HS117. So uh, your camera is going to be in there and it's going to allow it to slide up and down at an angle. All right, and then finally, I guess, uh, before we sort of put it together, the, well, we have just the hardware just here. So we've got all our screws right here. We've got our standoffs and things like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's great. They actually give you two extra standoffs. So that's fantastic. Um, we've got our HD sort of camera mounts and screws and things like that just here. And something I love, a little addition. They didn't have to include these, but uh, this is what comes with it. Uh, you also get some little screws for your flight controller and some nylon standoffs and stuff like that. So that's a, a really nice little touch. So that can make a big difference, uh, especially for new time builders who are trying to source all their parts it's great to have some little standoffs and stuff like that for your flight controller so well done epiquads uh, that's definitely a nice little touch thank you and of course we've got our two zip ties that came with it
Alrighty, and something I absolutely love about putting these together is just how simple uh, frames have gotten nowadays in terms of sort of arms and with this single base plate and simple designs and things like that. It should take no time at all, uh, so let's not waste any. Let's uh, put it together and see how she looks. Oh, there's one of my batteries charging. It's always a happy sound. Better than morning sirens anyway. Woo! And here it is all finished and that pretty much took no time at all. Now look at all the spares I've got. I didn't put in the uh, flight controller standoffs or anything like that because I'm going to do that when I'm building the thing. Uh, but over here uh, we've got a whole bunch of screws that sort of are spare right here and I'm guessing you can use them if you wanted to put your motors in. So uh, depending on what sort of motors you have you could actually use that to slide up in here if you've got the right sort of motors and there's enough clearance and things like that. So uh, it's nice that Epicods have given us all those spares if we want to use two per motor. Uh, of course we've got our two standoffs uh, spare which is fantastic. I didn't put in the FPV part because I've got to actually screw that to my FPV camera and then uh, as well we've got some longer screws up here in case we break any up in the top here but I highly doubt that that's going to happen and of course we've got one of these little sort of uh, vibration dampening grommets just here as well and our two zip ties. All right and let's see how much the whole frame weighs and remembering I don't have the little Nays nylon standoffs but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't weigh very much anyway and it's coming in at 133 grams just there with all the hardware and stuff like that in it. Fantastic all right. All right, so here's the frame here, all built, and I've got to say, it looks fantastic. I can't wait to build this thing. It's absolutely killing me. Uh, you can see here, you've got plenty of space in here to build with your components and things like that. And if I hold that up next to the 180 that I have, you will see, let me just get this around the right way, you'll see you have uh, significantly more room when it comes to building in there because of that longer top plate, because it's 135 millimeters. Uh, so this is the part I was talking about where your FPV camera and things like that will go, and then you've got a fair bit of room in here uh, for most builders to be able to put in their VTX and Nays and your PDB stacks and things like that. Now I was talking about the HD camera mount and how those sort of bobbles work and what happens you can actually zip tie this down and uh, it will be permanently on here but it'll still have a little bit of give as it bounces up and down like that. Uh, and that'll be able to uh, stop you getting out some of those jellos and things like that which is going to be great. And you can see here too just how thin its sort of profile is across here. So uh, it is the same width basically as your naves or your flight controller and it's really interesting when I look at this thing compared to my first sort of quad that I started flying. Just look at the difference uh, in how thick these things are. So this is my old Emax one here. You can pretty much almost fit like two of those in there. So uh, it's definitely going to be punching a hole through the sky. It's going to be extremely fast. So overall so far I am extremely pleased and I have uh, very 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 high expectations of what's going to come out of this frame. I think it's going to be fantastic and produce a machine uh, that I'm going to do some crazy stuff with. Uh, so I'm really really excited. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. But it is still on the down low a little bit. Uh, so that is the first sort of part look at the frame. Next we're going to be looking at the components and things like that and that's something I'm very excited about. So uh, coming up in part two uh, we're going to be looking at the PDB uh, which is uh, a very special little piece of kit which will make for an extremely tight and clean build inside here as well as the epi rex which is uh pretty much you can bind that straight to your tyrannus and it slides straight into your pdb as well as some other special news i have coming about this build and this frame right here so stay tuned for part two uh, and then in part three we'll take it out and give it a fly and see how she goes all right subscribe for more fpv related content and as always happy flying <coughs> on this oh shh, shh. They're listening.